Okay, welcome to my next setup in the Mercedes SLS GT3 at Monza. This is this time I've done this with no assist, and we'll talk about changes that obviously you can make for um, assist on after when the lap is finished. <coughs> um, the setup was done just over an hour, so it's only a base setup really, and it's a qualifying setup. I haven't really tested it for race, and there'll be need, you will need to make some changes anyway. Anyway, we'll go through the lap quickly. Okay, so going down to the first corner, we're going to break just past the 200 and break really hard, down in second really fast, then into first gear, clipping over the both curbs and getting on the power really early. See there, on the, this that's really important to really get on the power as hard as you can coming out of the corner. It'll give you a few attempts coming up to this first sector. Now we're going to look out for the bridge again. You can break a little bit earlier to make sure, but I like to break as late as possible pretty much on the, on the bridge and slam down the gears as fast as we can into second gear. Then we're going to clip the curb again on the inside and then in the apex again clipping the curb again and then hard on the power yet again and then into fourth gear and then back down into third gear for this court for the two lesmos and then we're going to try and stay as far to the right as we can don't want to run left and otherwise the camera will take you wide and then we're going to go into fourth and then back into third quickly there staying in third gear and hard on the power in third gear it's best to take that in third gear don't go near fourth gear for that corner with the um, mercedes as you'll bog down quite a bit so we're going to come into the next corner now, the next fast chicane, and we're going to break just before the bridge again, going down into fourth gear fast, and then into third gear. Now we're going to stay in third gear, clipping both a apexes there, and be careful on the power on that, on this through this chicane there, as if you get on the power a little bit too hard, the back end can step out. Then we're going to work our way through the gears, and coming into the final right hander, and we're going to break just before the 100. You may need to break a little bit earlier than most cars with this car, as it's a little bit heavy. So we're going down into third gear, and staying as tight to the inside as we can, holding the line as much as we can then hard on the power in third gear then flat out all the way over the line for a 1 minute 44.1 I think it was my potential was definitely in the 43s I think it was when I checked when I was doing it so there was definitely a 43.7 in this but I say I only did an hour's worth of tuning and setup work so there was a little bit of time left in the lap we'll go through the quick setup changes that you may need to make for the race etc in a minute now Okay, so let's have a little look at the setup that we use for that lap there. Um, we'll go through some changes that you may want to make for, obviously, the race. Um, tire pressures were pretty low, as with this car on that track. I don't know if it's the time of the year affects it as well, but they were reasonably low. Now, brake pressures, we could run 95 with this car, a lot higher than most other cars. And brake balance was fine on 59. It had a little lock-up, but it didn't really unset the car at all. Now, brake ducts will need to be increased massively for the race i would go up to at least 15 to 20 percent for short races and maybe 30 percent for anything longer or your your brakes you will basically have no brakes left midway through the race if you don't um i've just learned that from a really recently i don't know if there's been a change made in a patch but the the brake pressures need to be higher now as far as i'm concerned i could feel ma massive brake fade coming in so for long races you need to go higher even in qualifying you could go up to five percent and it might even help you out on the last corner because i found my brakes were getting a bit weak on the last corner so maybe go to five ten percent maybe <coughs> um obviously everything is usual for this session no gearing to be changed on this car limited slip three percent if you're struggling with a bit of um slip on the rear go down to zero percent even one percent or if you're finding it a little bit limiting go up a bit higher um deceleration slip 100 percent for this car definitely um preload 100 now again you can go up to 200 if you're finding that the car's sliding out a bit or you're getting on the power and it's slipping out or the other way if you're finding it a little bit restricting but 100 felt like a balance setting that would be good for the race as well for myself i mean you may want to go up a little bit for the race and i'm not too sure it depends on your own personal preferences but it felt like a nice balance setting on 100. Okay, and obviously with the radiator, for the race, you're going to need to go up a lot. For the qualifying, it's okay. Now, the bump stop, I found that having them quite low was better, in my opinion. It was more stable for the Mercedes. You can feel the drop in the car when you drop them as well. You can actually see a visual drop in the, in the ride height, which gives a bit more stability on the car. Um, suspension, for this track, remember... A little bit softer on the rear because it's a lot about traction rather than about corner and grip on the fast corners so softening the rear is going to give you a bit more traction out of slow bends especially if this, the first two chicanes where you gain a lot of time with slightly lower um, stiffness on the suspension a lot of the suspension settings can go quite aggressive with the mercedes still though i found and it gives you a lot of grip still um 
the the ride height again slammed it right down to the floor you could actually go up a bit on the front ride height if you're finding it's a little bit too aggressive on the front end so if you get a little bit of oversteer maybe raise the ride height a couple a couple maybe to 80 maximum 81 maybe um it will also give you better it should give you better acceleration out the corners raising the front end up a bit as well as you're going to have a, a less of a, a rake towards the front and it will give you better traction at the rear but i obviously still wanted some corner and grip for the fast chicane at the end of the lap um the springs again there the rear left spring rate in the race you see there it's slightly lower on the on the back again just to give us a bit more traction coming out of some of the um slower corners um the sway bars <coughs> i found just leaving them around the middle slightly stiffer on the front again was probably the best setting so far that i tried on that remember this is only an hour's worth of testing but this is basically a base setup for you to work with now camber angles reasonably low because we're at monster with this mercedes but the rear need to be quite close to the front so i found just to give you the um, stability at the rear and the toe angles were pretty much close to what i have on most cars now downforce zero two tried zero one but i found zero two gave me better traction which ended up with pretty much the same lap time but it was easier to achieve so zero one you can go with but it's, it may be slightly fast but it's harder to achieve the lap time if you're with me now weight bias definitely towards the rear because we need the traction on the rear for this track if it was something like spa i would probably go all the way to the front for m spa because you want the corner and grip through fast corners but with slow corners coming out of these chicanes you definitely need to go with rear by more rear weight bias for the um longitudinal the longitudinal weight bias anyway guys i hope this little description has helped you out i'm just going to leave you quickly with the four three back settings that i don't really change and then there's a little replay of the lap that i did from the um, tv cameras i hope you enjoyed this video and remember give myself a like and a subscribe if this helps you out and there'll be plenty more videos shortly to come